Um, so the Cascades card shape. Cascades card shape launched back in December 2020 as part of the Perfectly Peaceful collection. Um, it looks a little bit like uh, this here. Really gorgeous. A lovely arch shaped card. Now if you're familiar with Carnation you'll already know you can use this as a standard card blank. If I just turn it around you can see all the dies included. So you'd cut one of the outermost layer twice. Once for the front of the card, once for the back score line down the side and then you've got um, a side opening card there and of course then you can decorate with all your mats and layers and your filigree as well should you wish to. The filigree within this particular die set cuts into the card. Let me just um, get one out so you can see. I'm just going to gently peel that away from the backing paper there. So if I hold that to camera you can see this doesn't have an outside cutting edge, which is great because it means it gives you so much more craftability with your makes. So you could use this to cut directly into your card, leaving all that filigree as a drop away from the card itself. You can also then team it with the mats and layers like so to then give it an outside cutting edge so you can cut it away from your card as well, which is what we're gonna do in this demonstration for you guys today. Now, there are a number of ways of using it. As I did allude, there are templates on our website um, that you can download, use either as a template or literally cut out and fold as indicated to then create this cascading effect, which is what we're going to do in today's demonstration. The Cascades card shape to go alongside this Facebook Live is today's deal of the day at 20% off. So a nice little saving on that. For everyone that's trying to find the, the deal of the day, I've seen a few posts in our group saying, oh, you know, I can't find it, it's, it's changed. We've moved it down um, into the drop down for the shop, okay? Um, obviously, we've put a new tab on the menu for our Carnation Crafts TV. We've now got a drop down for the deal of the day. So if you head to our website, carnationcrafts.co.uk, click on shop, you can't miss it. It's in big red button on there see it saying deal of the day. If you click on that, it will take you through to the deal of the day. Today's being the Cascade card shape. Uh, let's just see if we've got any questions coming in at the moment. Linda's just joined us as well as Karen. Um, Elaine's here. Uh, Janine's here. Hello, lovely. Janine is our lead DT. She says, hi, gorgeous. I adore this collection. Yeah, it is a beautiful collection, isn't it? Uh, Kim says, hi, Hannah. First time watching. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Kim. And a Hillary. We've got a Hillary uh, first time watching as well. So welcome to both of you. So I'm going to turn the camera around. So you've got a nice drop down view here. So on our website, as I've mentioned a couple of times already, if you look under the inspiration tab, you'll see several templates that link to the cascade card shape, okay? Now what these allow you to do, as we go through the demonstration you'll see, you can cut this out, follow the score lines. At the top here it says mountain, valley, mountain, valley to give you a concertina. We then then stick elements of the card shape to this base and it creates a cascade card. Now there's three different types of template. They all work in, in a similar fashion. This one is the concertina spine that I will be using for this demonstration. So without further ado, let's just grab my elements. So I'm just going to use the base card for this and bring that into shot and also my layers as well. Okay, so what we've got here is that beautiful arch card shape. Remember, as we said during the start of the demonstration, that is the largest most die within the pack. If you cut that twice, score down one side, that will then give you a side folding card to open and then you've got a standard card, but with this lovely arched effect. It kind of is quite reminiscent of like a stained glass window. So if you are sort of making Easter cards or um, with sympathy cards, that sort of thing, it would be really ideal for that as well. Um, what we're going to do onto this is add a few of the mats and layers. So included within the pack are what we call mats and layers. They're basically just framing devices. But this cascade card shape has the mats and layers split across two sections to give you this kind of nice effect to the design. And then, of course, your filigree as well. Now, I'm going to be working on a white on white design background. This could be coloured card. 
this could be you know the perfect papers this could be the free backing papers it's whatever you want to work with um, I just felt white on white would be quite nice to give you an overview of how to use this card shape. Um, so I've cut all of these elements from our 350 Perfect Smooth um, card stock because that's going to give you a nice strong base into which we can start adding our design. So we're going to get this one prepped first. Um, these are all going to be stuck using finger lift tape. So I've got my tape ready to go on the backs. And all we're going to do is fold... A little bit of the carrier sheet over one side and the other to create a tab and then we can align that with the same amount of border all the way around top bottom and to the side just like so creating those little tabs means I can adjust the placement go in hold the tab and peel away before burnishing that down into place and like so okay same with the other side it just allows you to line things up really well <laughs> sorry that's more playing with his cricket if you can hear that in the background he's got a bit bit crazy having a bit of a bit of fun in the sun i think that cat is today and okay so we're just lining up that other side just creating the same amount of space around and then peeling and burnishing down so because i'm building this concertina effect from the cascading um, templates um, I'm using flat layers for all of these so these are all stuck on either using my everyday white glue for the filigree elements or indeed finger lift tape for the rest okay so again just lining that up in the mat and layer and peeling away to make that nice and straight okay so really really simple to put together so if you were making this as a side folding card you could do it you could do it in this fashion as well um sue says please can you tell me hannah when the new set will be on carnation crafts to buy separately um as i brought one on monday and they were sold out orchard dies um sue as with every single launch that we do with create and craft they are ex um, subject to an exclusivity period once that has been fulfilled the items will be released on our website it normally takes about two weeks is all um what i'd recommend if you haven't done so already sign up to our newsletter you can do so by visiting uh uk forward slash newsletter if you sign up for it we always send out um the details of new launches and special offers alison says will you do a tutorial on how to use the dies correctly like the split ones etc back to basics tutorial yeah absolutely Alison and um, actually if you hop on to our YouTube channel you'll find loads and loads of demonstrations on the split mat layers apertures how to line up the um dies with the vignettes um how to cut out the larger vignettes they are all on there I know you I think you did comment on the Facebook request post I put up in group and I have linked you to a video in that as well so just pop along to there and you'll be able to see that hopefully that helps you out okay so what I've then done is I've taken the inside of these um, arches if you like and I've cut them a couple of times one two three four okay what I haven't done is trimmed them off um, you can do that or if you wish to you so you can have a cascade where it's actually shortening in length as well as across um, for these I'm just using them cut as is but again I've cut them from 350 GSM perfect smooth so the, the elements I've used for these are the mats and layers so the arches that one and then the smaller ones. So I'm not using every single uh, die within the pack. I've skipped one of the mats and layers just to give me a little bit of a, an extra border around. Okay, so we've cut that one on that side and then we've repeated for the other side, like so, okay? Really, really simple. Just running through a die cutter machine, using a little bit of um, tape to hold that in place to create our cascades. This is where you introduce the spine. So remember that template I showed you? Okay, what I've done is I've literally used that as a template. So we have, it will look like this 
when you cut it out. So again, I've cut that from 350 Perfect Smooth Cardstock. Remember, we're working on a construction base. We're working on um, something that's gonna work as the spine for the card. So you want something heavyweight that's gonna stand up to being sort of opened and closed and things like that. All we've done is then followed the directions of the fold. So this one's a mountain fold. So we've created a little mountain. The next fold, it says valley fold. So we've pushed that one back. Mountain and valley, okay? And that creates our concertina spine for the concertina cascade, okay? We're gonna then stick that behind the card shape, okay? So we're gonna just line this up. I'm gonna use the base of my mat here, lifting the spine just slightly, but making sure that's gourd edge lines up perfectly with the back of your arch okay that's going to begin your spine if i just close it up you might get a sort of hint of where we're going with this okay now i'm using red liner tape on this you want a nice strong adhesive tape red liner tape is perfect for that but as we always say in these demonstrations, please don't try and take all the tape off, then add your card in, because all you're going to do is get in a sticky mess. Take one edge, peel it away, make sure everything's lined up against that spine, against that fold. Once you're happy with your placement, peel away the tab and burnish, okay? That then gets the spine sitting in the right place, meaning you can then go hands-free, turn things over, and in the, um, just burnish that down as well. If you want a really nice strong stick between the layers, use a bone folder. And then we can go in and peel away the rest of the carrier sheets for the red liner tape on the remaining elements of the tape on here. So just peeling like so, okay? If you wanted to um, perhaps send this to someone, I'm literally doing this as a demonstration for you guys, so I'm not going to do all the finishing touches. If you were sending this, what I would suggest you could consider is cutting another layer of the arch and then just popping that on the back and then doing the same for each one of your um, cascade layers as well. That then just hides the mechanism. I'm leaving it open so you can see the mechanism purely for this demonstration, okay? So back to the front, we've now got our spine lined up like so. If you ever get stuck on which way you're folding or which way you're going, just refer back to that template, okay? And that just gives you a little hint. And I tend to keep it folded on the front of the card so I can work by opening the spine, opening the little leaves of the spine and just situating my arches and things where I need them. So the next fold, so we folded it across the card the next fold is where we're going to put our next element in. So we're going to take one of those uh, little card shapes that we had just cut out from the arches. And again, just using the edge of my mat to line these things up, butting it up against the edge of the score line as well, making sure Everything is free, everything is moving. Now I'm gonna quickly run through and show you what it's gonna look like when we add in the other elements. So I'm swapping between the sides, okay? So you've got one arch coming this way, then for the next arch we go that way, folding that back over, arch coming over this way, folding that back over, and then the final arch coming over like so. Obviously, I'm demonstrating this just one way. There's no particular set way of creating this. If you want to have a play around and you want to, you know, put, put things in a different orientation, perhaps you want the um, dies coming out like so, playing around with the arch to give you more of a, a kind of looped effect on the top, you can absolutely do so. Once you've cut it out, it is totally up to you how you position and how you finish, okay? So you, you really got options on this, right? I'm gonna go with just the kind of curved top. And all we're gonna do is exactly what we've just done, butting that up against, making sure everything's nice and aligned. 
can't get my head right over it to check, but you'll get the idea, okay? And then again, just removing one of the carrier sheets of the red liner tape. So again, remember we're doing construction, so every element of this is going to be stuck with red liner tape, nice strong adhesive tape. Once that's in place, just burnishing that down with my bone folder. Anywhere where we're folding back over, I mean, it's quite tight on the folds and things if you really butt it up again. So just go in with your bone folder and make sure you're evening those up. Each one comes into play, same fashion, butting it up against the fold, butting it up against the score line, giving it a little bit of room because obviously we're working with heavyweight cardstock. Removing one layer of tape, making sure I can still get in <laughs> and remove the other layer like so. I'm using the pokey tool just to get in between the layer of the carrier sheet and the cardstock there. Next one for the next one. Obviously you can see I haven't added my anti-static to my red liner so it's sticking to absolutely everything which is a pain so if you are finding that uh, a little bit of talcum powder or uh, rub the um, you know the little kind of um, bags you get for stamping the anti-static bags if you rub that over your red liner tape it will stop it sticking to everything I don't actually know where my little bag has gone I think probably Morph's had it out of my tool bag and run off with it because that sounds like something Morph would do Morph being the cat, not the baby. And then just going in and completing the construction with the layers. It gets a little bit fiddly when you get down to this kind of size because obviously you're working on a much slimmer spine. But you'll get there, just go in, remove the carrier, carrier tape. And then the final one, I think I'll chance it just because it's quite layered now and we'll butt that up, making sure everything is aligned. So just take your time lining everything up like so. I am just gonna give that a quick little burnish to make sure everything is flat and those folds are flat. That then gives you this fun sort of pull out effect from the card. So you can still read the inside of the card, but you've got these fun little elements to the front. Now, obviously this is designed from a point of view that you've got your flaps, for want of a better word, at a standard size, you know, as per the printout, but you can mix that up. You know, you could um, take some longer or put them shorter or, you know, it's up to you to really change this up. But that gives you the card base. So hopefully that's a good overview of just one way of using the um, templates. Um, Shelly has just said, Hannah, some say just place the carriage sheet on a piece of kitchen roll. Yeah, you can do, absolutely. I don't tend to, only because if I can find, here we go, this is a good example. Obviously, the, the edge of red line tape is sticky. You know, you've still got that gluey, gluey bit on it. If you stick it on your kitchen roll, you're going to again get kitchen roll fluff all on it as well. I mean, this isn't a great example because this has got all sorts stuck to it, to be honest <laughs> with you. Um, but when you're then peeling it away and using it in your card makes, you can transfer some of that fluff um, onto the inside of the tape as well, which can make it a little bit bumpy. It's totally up to you though. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you do it, so it's hardly noticeable once you're constructing your cards. At this stage, you can then decorate however you wish. So um, for me, I've chosen a whole host of the Into Spring die cuts. So we've got the crocuses with the lilies, we've got the daffodils, we've got the bluebells. I just thought it'd be a little bit of fun to go with a spring theme, um, simply because obviously, you know, we're coming into spring. Uh, if you're making this perhaps as a last minute Mother's Day card, for example, this would look lovely with that idea in mind. Um, and these were really nice sort of bold flowers to use. I have tangled them up a little bit, so please forgive me whilst I just sort through the flowers themselves. Let's just have a check back, make sure I'm not missing any questions. Uh, Humberta's here from a very wet Warren in Rhode Island. Oh, I'm sorry, Humberta. I guess we've probably stolen some of your nice weather. Um, but yes, hopefully it's not too wet over there for you. So bluebells, daffodils and crocuses, all from the Interspring collection, as I say. I just felt it might be fun to mix up the flowers 
for a little bit of a Mother's Day or a spring birthday card, for example. So these are a lovely long sized uh, element, ideal for your kind of seven by sevens or eight by eight cards, six by sixes, whatever it may be. But there are little elements of this that you can absolutely cut into and take away and use in separate projects, which is what we're going to do for this demonstration. So I'm going to trim into just a couple of these using my scissors here. So I'm going to select areas and just start sectioning them off into a bigger size that we could use and a smaller size that we could use, just giving us options. Anywhere where we've snipped, I'm going to go in and just neaten that up. I'm going to take one of the daffodils in a similar vein as well. So I'm just lining it up against one of the um, arches for the cascade there and just checking that it will fit just snipping away and then neatening up as well. Oh, Pamela, that's a good idea. I rub the red liner tape with a tumble dry sheet, stops the static and smells lovely. I like that idea, that's that's a good one. A little less fluffy than um, kitchen roll maybe, which would be um, helpful as well, wouldn't it? So we've got the daffodils and the snowdrops. I love that colour. I think, I think there's something so spring-like about having a nice crisp white on white background with this very, very lovely um, spring-like florals in the foreground as well. I think that's very nice. So again, just sectioning off your larger and smaller area. Sorry, it would help if I did this on camera, wouldn't it? Sorry, guys. Um, just trimming that through. And then I'm gonna get some of the crocuses ready as well. Crocuses and lily of the valley here. Um, these are very reminiscent of the, the flowers that are included on the, um, blah, 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 what do I want to say, Tranquil Times frames as well. So again, these little elements whereby you can cross-pollinate all your collections is so brilliant when it comes to carnation crafts. Just rounding everything I've snipped away off, make it a little bit neater. I think I snipped that one off. Let's just round him as well. Whenever I'm rounding, what I'm doing is I'm taking the paper and moving the paper rather than trying to use the um, scissors to round. It's just an easier way of manipulating the die cuts there. And then just like so. There we go. And then we've got a few larger, a few smaller. Did I neaten that one up? No, let's go in and neaten that one up, Hannah, just in case. I'm going to use that in the design as well. So I'm not going to do all the die cuts that are in front of me. I'm just going to do a few to begin with so I can go back and choose to add in if I want. Just like so. And sticking. Brilliant. OK, so I think let's start with let's start on the inside to come to the outside, because otherwise you're going to end up sort of flipping and flopping between the glue, which isn't always the best plan in the world. For the sentiment, I've chosen happy birthday because I thought nice spring birthday card might be quite fun. This sentiment's actually from the Fresh Blooms card shape. Um, it's part of all the different little elements within there. And I've cut this particular sentiment, these colours, from the perfect papers of the Interspring collection because then they work with the artwork we are looking at today. I'm going to position it just slightly up from centre and then mount it on foam tape as well to give it a little bit of height and a little bit of drop shadow there. Now that's a little bit wonky but never mind. Um, and I think what flowers should we go with? What flowers should we go with? Uh, let's try some bluebells possibly and see how they look. Little bluebells coming over the edge of the card to look nice and pretty and just having those bluebells aligned along the bottom of your card design as well. So I'm going to grab my pin flare glue gel. I might need to refill that at some point. I've already shaped these florals out, so I'm not going to go in and add loads of um, height and dimension with my ball tools. If it's something you want to add to, you can absolutely do that as well. Just going to put a few points of the red light and um, red liner tape honestly listen to me uh pin flare glue gel down and then just lining those flowers up with the bottom it's so interesting the ways of working with these because you can let me just lift that sentiment slightly to poke that under 
you can go in and just you know tease things up add things to a dimension add things to a level as well just by just by adding in these different flowers so important is to go along and ground everything so everything's going to come from the same layer just up from the bottom of the card try not to um get into a situation where you've got anything escaping over the bottom edge because obviously that's going to impede when you try and stand the card up but that's really pretty for a little background card and you can see it kind of invites you in to have a look what's going on at the back there um Joyce says, uh, afternoon Hannah and all, uh, a bit late today. No problem, don't ever worry about being late. We upload all the videos afterwards to the YouTube channel as well. So they are there at your convenience to watch. Um, what GSM are you using to print the flowers, please? I'm using our mirrored vignettes. Um, so you've got the same detailing on the reverse as what you do on the front. So I always, always use our 120 GSM Pro printing paper if I am printing mirrored vignettes simply because when we fold them you then get the uh, doubling of the paper so it cuts actually at a 240 which is a nice heavy weight for the designs i think let's go in with maybe a few daffodils next but i think i just want to take kind of a, a section a cross section through the middle here um, so again, just trimming in. And this is a great way about crafting with um, Carnation especially because these are downloads. You can literally go in, download and print as many times as you like. So it doesn't limit you. You haven't got a paper pack you're worried about using up or anything like that. You've got everything on hand to print time and time again to really, really go for it when it comes to making decisions on placement and things like that. And, you know, if you did cut into something, I think, Oh, I don't like it now. I want I want something a little bit wider or whatever. You can just print it again and cut it again. I just think that's perfect. Alison says, do you ever give tutorials on memory books? I don't, I haven't done to this point, uh, Alison, just simply because they take an absolute age to put together. And I'm always so in awe with all the beautiful work that, that people do in, in the memory book groups and things like that. Um, it might be something I consider perhaps a series of later on, um, but I need kind of five minutes headspace to kind of create all the bases for that and work out a plan on how I can bring that to you in a fashion that works and also to keep Ruben occupied for long enough to make <laughs> to allow me to make all the demos for it as well <laughs> but I mean saying that in all sort of jest and everything a lot of the elements that I show you i.e this kind of spine effect we're doing with the concertina um, you can then implement most of their techniques into a memory book design as well so you know have a little play around um, and that's always an option for future shows um daffodils on next again just lining that up with the bottom because we're working on this cascade i don't want them coming too far over the internal edges of the card but i'm quite happy if they escape over i do see lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of comments asking about envelopes and things like that to be perfectly honest with you i very rarely use envelopes not when we've got sort of the ability to craft things in um situations such as the, the beautiful boxes we do um, I like to add a lot of layers to my cards. I like a lot of height and dimension. Um, so boxes are something that just, just work for me on a personal level a lot better than what envelopes do. Um, and the multi-box, again, excuse me, <coughs> I've done quite a few demonstrations on how you can use that and implement that in your designs, um, to then make it work for different shaped cards as well, um, from, well, from a rectangle and a square point of view too just then trimming the crocuses down so i'm swapping between bluebells obviously the daffodils and the crocuses again all of these available as part of the into spring collection uh, again i love these things that kind of travel up the length of the card but i think it's so fun to then play around with negative space as well just leaving that fresh leaving that free from any any clutter uh, i might be able to squidge out a little bit more pin flare so we're going to go in like so. Um, again, pin flare is my personal preference when it comes to card making. Um, I love the ability it gives you to add height and dimension, um, but also I really love the way um, you can sculpt with it as well. So each layer, I'm just twisting and turning to access uh, the, the panels. 
I think let's go bluebells again. What are you up to, Moo? Oh, you're bringing me presents. Thank you. It's not it's not playtime. I'm trying to do a Facebook Live here, Cat. Um, bless him. Just noticed that could do with a little trim, just neaten it up. So again, moving the paper rather than the scissors, just to round that off slightly. And even down to having just something as simple as that. That, do you know what? That on an actual card would be stunning, wouldn't it? Having your arch cut twice, so you've got um, an opening or perhaps on this side um, to make the card. Having that kind of elegant look to the arch there and just having that as your card with your bluebells on would just be just so simplistic but so effective perhaps you're making for charity or you're batch making or you're making cards whereby you're um, adding them to a pack of cards that would look so effective wouldn't it i would really like to receive a card that looked like that again lining those bluebells up along the bottom and then just teasing out the backs of the cards there Lilies are getting a little bit caught up in my spine. Let's just go in and adjust those up and give those a little bit of a squidge down so the glue grabs like so. There we go. Uh, daffodils to finish because I thought that pop of colour against the blues and things we've got in the background would look really, really pretty. Shelley says, if you print the coloured backing card, what GSM would you use? Just thinking in case they are out of stock. Um, again, personal preference, um, I tend to use either the 170 GSM um, or the 220 if I want something a little bit more heavy weight. Um, but again, I print on high quality print settings uh, in my Adobe Reader and then I do select matte photo paper as well as the paper type um, just so the printer can then uh, basically work to its best advantage as well. So that's popped together all of the florals. I'm not going to overload this card. I think I'm going to save those florals for another project for another day. I'm just going to scoop those out of the way quickly and give you a little run through of this scenic card we've created. So you've got the inside there with the bluebells. You've then got your layers as we cascade out that are trying to escape off the front of my card all opening like so. So when we stand it up, you kind of get this panoramic view. That lily is honestly trying to escape from my card itself of the design like so. Okay, I will obviously turn the camera around so you can see that a little better. <laughs> there we go. So you can see there, you've got this cascading design. And of course you could decorate all the sides of this if you wanted to to give you this fun cascading card shape effect. It's really hard to get it on camera in its entirety. That's kind of not too bad. Really nice paired back design. Obviously the whole point of this demo is to show you how to use that uh, spine uh, for the concertina effect, but it's the same sort of process for the look of the finished design across all of the templates, all available from our website, Carnation Crafts. I will try and take a photo of this um, it might not be the best photo because obviously it's it's kind of reliant on everything. It's more of a view it in person kind of card. But I will take a photo and upload it to my Facebook page as well. Um, the Audrey says the bluebells are just popping out the ground here in Virginia. Oh, I can't wait to make a card with all the spring flowers. Yeah, they're gorgeous. And what a lovely sight. It's that rebirth, new beginning. Everything's kind of starting afresh. It's a really lovely feeling at this time of year. Um, Betty said, thank you so much. I ordered dyes yesterday afternoon and received them today. Great service. Well, I will pass on your thanks, Betty, to the wonderful warehouse team. They are amazing. Um, and they do obviously know how much you want to be crafting so quickly. So they are working so hard to get your orders out nice and quick for you as well. Um, let's say, I'll do my level best to take a nice photo of that and I will upload it to the Facebook group as well. Now, I have got something to share with you. You might have seen it on social media. Obviously, in the UK, it is Mother's Day on Sunday, which is lovely. Um, but Carnation are giving back again. They are fantastic. We are doing a Mother's Day sale. So it's site-wide sale across everything. Exclusions do apply. I've seen a couple of comments saying, you know, 
what's excluded. It is detailed on the um, little poster we've put up on our Facebook page. Um, anything obviously of new collection we can't discount for obvious reasons. Um, so um, any new collections here are excluded from the sale. But the rest of the site um, is 20% off gift vouchers and creative products are not included um but everything else is 20 percent off uh for from midnight on saturday morning through to basically midnight on sunday evening uh really nice time to stock up on perhaps your papers or you know that perhaps you've had your eye on a particular collection for a long while it's just something we don't do it often a little flash sale for you guys to enjoy. Um, perhaps you've been lucky enough or will be lucky enough to receive uh, Carnation gift vouchers for Mother's Day. Great way to have a little spurge and make your vouchers go further uh, this Mother's Day coming up. So that's Saturday and Sunday. There will be a site-wide sale. Obviously, exclusions do apply. So head on over to the website on Saturday to take full advantage of that. Um, as mentioned, we do have our Facebook group, super, super friendly Facebook group as well. Uh, they are called Carnation Crafters. You can find them by searching that on uh, on Facebook as well. We do have a post in there at the moment uh, for any requests of what you'd like to see demonstrated within Facebook Lives. Get them in quickly because um, I'm not going to be here <laughs> for much much longer uh, and we try and bring you uh, one Facebook live each week at least so we haven't got many more to fill up uh, before I'm off on my maternity leave so uh, do get your requests in quickly and we will do our very best to try and show any that we haven't done I have been going through the requests post and linking to videos. If you've already, if you asked for something that we've already filmed, I have been linking uh, to past videos whereby it might help you out or might answer your questions as well. Uh, June says, are the USB, goodness me, that was about a bit of a mouthful. Um, are the USBs excluded? No, uh, the most recent USBs will be, but um, if you're looking to build your collection or back catalogue, for example, uh, June, they will be included. Uh, Alison, my baby is due in the summer, but I'm taking a little bit of leave beforehand. So, uh, yeah, that will be that will be soon. Uh, thank you for your questions. Um, yeah, so as I say, hop on over to the Facebook group. Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter as well. So you're going to be the first to hear about new and exclusive offers, anything we're launching on the web, anything we're launching on Carnation Crafts TV. And don't forget to check out the sale, which is happening on Saturday and Sunday. Until then, take care, stay safe. And I look forward to seeing your versions of this card over in our group, Carnation Crafters. Bye, everyone. <laughs>